One of the things that always fascinated me with computers was uh, the ability for them to control other systems, mechanical systems. And back in the early 80s, when I started my computer career, which was a small ZX Spectrum with uh, 16 kilobytes of RAM, seven were available for programming, by the way, I always wanted to create some sort of uh, electronics setup where I could use my computer to control all sorts of things. And, uh, well, that never happened. But fast forward um, a bunch of years, you can make the subtraction from 2021 to 1982, and you'll find out how much I was waiting for this. And um, I decided to do something the last few days in the form of using Cinema 4D as uh, the driving software to drive some uh, electronics uh, through an Arduino. And uh, with the great help of uh, a few good friends and brilliant people, which I'm going to credit in the description text below, I managed to do that. It took me roughly three days to put together. And uh, I have a very little knowledge of Arduino. I've done some stuff. I understand general electronics. But believe me, this is much simpler than it sounds. And uh, yeah, I believe that after watching this tutorial, you will get a better idea. You'll know exactly what to do to get your virtual creations from inside the screen and take them outside in the real world. And uh, funny enough, the times we're living are so fantastic, uh, in terms of electronics that is, uh, that you can purchase servos with just um, a few pennies. They're very cheap. I think they're less than $5 a piece, maybe $4 a piece. And um, an Arduino or compatible board for $10, $15 or $20. You can even do the same project on a board that costs five or six dollars. So the financial overhead for doing something like this is very low. It takes a bit of time. And uh, anyhow, I'm going to try and give you all the information you need and what you need to be aware of to make this work. And uh, hopefully I'm going to see some of you making fantastic things. Anyhow, we're going to dive right in and I'm going to explain everything from installation, from setups, from connections and everything else you may need to know. And never forget, nose man knows. The first thing you need to do is download a third party Python library that allows you to talk to the serial ports and uh, those include USB ports and all sorts of stuff. So go to this page where all the documentation is for Pi Serial and uh, just find the download page. And from the download page, go to the download files and download this one here, Pi Serial 3.0, whatever the latest version is, whenever you're going to watch this video and so forth. And uh, download it somewhere where you can access it on your hard drive. I chose to download it in this uh, Pi Serial folder, which is on my desktop, I think, downloads, whatever. Now, this is the file you're going to download. And uh, depending on your operating system and depending on what you have, you just need to unpack it. On the Mac, I just double clicked. But anyhow, just uncompress this and it will create this folder here. Now, when you go into this folder, amongst other things, which uh, I don't know what they are and I don't care, to be honest, there's this folder here that says Serial. This is the actual library. And this is what we are going to copy in the appropriate place for Cinema 4D to read the library. So select it and copy it. Command C, Control C or whatever. You can use your menu buttons for all I care. I don't mind. So we copy it. And let me show you where the other folder is. In Cinema 4D, bring up the preferences. So you can go to Edit, Preferences. In your preferences, I've been playing around with the colors, by the way, all you have to do is click on this button, Open Preferences Folder. In your Preferences Folder, you will find something that is called Python 3.7. And uh, I don't know if in older versions it's going to have a different name, but I don't care. Double click on that. And inside that, you will find a folder called Libs. And in here, you will just paste that folder you copied, the serial folder. I've already done it. And here is basically where you put all your third-party libraries for Python. Once you have done that, quit Cinema 4D if it was open and relaunch it. And in order for you to test to see if the library has been loaded, do the following. Go to the extensions and bring up the console. Click on the Python tab 
and go in here and type import serial and press enter. If this happens, that means that your library has been loaded. If you get error messages, what is that? Who are you? What do you want from me? And all that. That means the installation has failed. And I have no advice to give you beyond what I've already told you. If you follow this route, both on Mac and PC, it will work. And I take no responsibility for any problems you have. Let's continue. So the library has been imported. So now let's look at the actual code inside Cinema 4D and how it works. One thing you need to remember is that you don't need to install Python on your system because this library is installed in Cinema 4D's internal Python. I actually went through the wrong route of installing Python, the latest one, on my Mac and I was actually just wasting my time. You do not need Python on your system. If it's there, good. It has nothing to do with Cinema 4D's Python. It's a sandbox. It works when Cinema 4D is open and has no relationship whatsoever with your system's Python. What I just did, copying that library inside that Cinema 4D Preferences library folder, that's all you need to do to make it accessible to Cinema 4D and do anything you want to do. So what you're seeing here is the file I will provide in the description text below. And I've created uh, this uh, servo model, whatever, it's a simple model. And I have this null, and this null is called controller and has a controller user data I created. And currently the setup is set to drive three servos. If you want to drive fewer or more, you will need to amend some things in the code, but it's so easy to do, you will learn everything as we move on with the tutorial. So you just drag each and every one of your objects in the appropriate link, and this will connect it to the code. So let's go and look at the code. It's nothing more than a Python tag. If I double click, I will get the expression editor. Most of this is comments. Everything that's green doesn't participate in the code at all. Uh, it's just there for your own protection. For example, this code is to be used at your own peril and I take no responsibility. And uh, I have links to my tutorial and all that. But if you're watching it now, uh, this doesn't make a difference, does it? Anyway, so let's look at the code. And uh, for that matter, I'm going to delete most of these comments just to clear up the view a bit and make it nice and clear. So as is usual in Python, we have to import uh, various libraries and the standard ones are Cinema 4D and so forth. This uh, import struct, I think it was left over by a previous version. I'm just uh, leaving it there, although I don't think it does anything. But the import serial is the important one. In order for Cinema 4D's Python to work with the new library, you have to import it before you write any code. And I had uh, the time library. Again, you don't need this. I just left it there for your convenience which is another way to say I forgot to remove it. Anyway, so this first line here sets a variable called Arduino. You can call it Noseman if you want. It doesn't make a difference. And uh, what it does, it uses the serial library to tell this particular variable which port we are talking to, where the connection is going to be occurring and where the data is going to be sent. What you see here, the slash dev slash EU and all that, that's the Mac. If uh, you are on a PC, you'll probably see something like capital COM1, COM2, COM3. It's uh, something like that. And if you want to find exactly the name of this, you will find it in the Arduino IDE window. This is the Arduino IDE interface. I'm not going to waste a second telling you where to find the Arduino stuff. There are millions of resources on the internet. But anyhow, if you go down here right at the bottom, it says Arduino Uno, which is the board I have currently, on, and it has the name exactly of the port you need to use inside that serial command. So this is exactly where you're going to find it. And you have to connect your Arduino in order for that to work. And don't forget, you need to go to the tools if it's a new board and you haven't connected it before and go to the port and select the port that your Arduino is connected on. So for the Mac, it's this one here. So that's how you get that name slash dev or com3 or something like that. Back to Cinema 4D. The board rate is uh, the speed by which you are communicating between the two devices. 
the board rate here and uh, the board rate over here in the Arduino program need to match. Now, a little secret. At some point, I made a mistake, and this was set to 9,600, and the other one was set to 115,200, and it still worked. So uh, I'm telling you what you should do, but it does work. The timeout, I left it at zero. I have no clue what it does. It has to do with... Uh, I'm not going to even bother. I have no idea. Just leave it as it is. Now, you can observe that this over here, this variable, is set outside the main function. And the reason is, as far as I understand it, and I'm not sure about that, but this, whatever is outside the main function, is uh, used when the script resets. And this is going to loop with every frame. Now, because there's a chance that what I just told you is absolute nonsense, don't take my word for it, but it works for me, so uh, you can go and look it up in the documentation. Now, let's take a look at this check here, the if Arduino is open. This was handed when I realized that when my animation was uh, looping after the animation range was exceeded and it went back to zero, I would lose connection with my serial port, not always, but quite often. And that happened mostly on the PC. So I added this check here to see if that port is open or not, and if it's not, then to open it. Now, for some reason, it seems to work on the Mac. I don't have a problem. I can set my animation to 90 frames, and it will loop without any issues. But it doesn't work with a PC, so this over here may be rubbish as well. And uh, you can always try uh, get rid of it and see what happens. The way I remedy this is that I set my animation range to a ridiculously high number, something like 900,000 or 900 million frames. As long as it only resets once at the beginning, everything then works fine. And this will give you enough time to play with your animation and watch your servers move back and forth. And this seems to be more of a problem with the PC. And again, I'm sure I've forgotten something. I don't know something. There's another way to deal with that. But that's how I dealt with it. If for any reason you lose connection to the serial port, unplugging the Arduino and plugging it in again seems to solve the problem. So the way I would do it is I would uh, rewind, I would uh, connect my Arduino, and the program is still there, providing you download it at least once. It's a prerequisite. You have to download the Arduino program on the Arduino. If you don't know that, I think uh, maybe you need to read a bit more before you do this project. Anyhow, once you plug in the Arduino and everything seems fine, uh, press play, then stop, rewind once, and then press play, and it should play. Now, let me see if I got an error in my console. And you can see this error here. This is what happens when it can't find the board. It gives you some sort of serial exception, cannot open board, and all that kind of stuff. So the way to do that is, as I told you, you unplug the Arduino, you plug it in again, you rewind, you press play, and uh, at a given moment it will work. And once it starts working, and it doesn't have to loop back to the beginning of the animation, you shouldn't have a problem. And again, this was less prevalent on the Mac, but the PC gives me a bit of a headache in that regard. Excellent. So let's move down. I'm going to move this over here because it's irritating me for some reason. I'm like a cat. I'm very easily irritable for no apparent reason. So controller null is another variable, which is the object the tag is assigned to. So if you're creating Python tags and you want to reference the object, the object that's called controller here, you use the op, which is the tag itself, get object. And uh, that is uh, getting the parent, the object that contains, that holds this tag. So from this point onwards, the variable controller null represents the null. And because this null has some user data, we can access that user data, as you can see down here, from the code. Now, how did I know what to write here? See, I am a genius, but there are some things you can do which make your life easier. Let's go and add some lines here. Whenever you have some sort of parameter, the coordinates, the object parameters, or any user data, if you want to put them in your Python code, what you do, you just drag it in here. And uh, like magic, it appears in here. Now, this gives you the name of this, which can be called whatever you want. But this is not the correct variable. You just need to use the variable you assigned to that object. So you take the control and null, you copy it, 
and you paste it on top of this. Remove this and change it. So this now, this line here, means that it's taking the user data with ID 2 from the object that is in the attribute controller now, which was set in the previous line as the parent of the tag. My God, so many things are happening and we don't even realize it. Anyway, so where are these IDs from? Well, we don't really care because I can just grab another parameter and you can see it's ID 3, then add another parameter. You can add the position of an object. And again, just exchange this for the variable that holds that object and it gives you anything you want. So that's how I got that one. But if you are curious, nonetheless, if I go to user data, manage user data and click on any of the parameters, you will see the ID is the same ID you find here. So if for any reason you forget what is what, just go here, check out the IDs two, three and four. And these are auto assigned. So you can't go and change it. Too bad. So let me cancel this and let me remove these lines of code. Have I told you that I'm not very fond of our Python uh, editor, but uh, that's another story. Excellent. So we have loaded the user data from this, from these links, so that we tell this script from which objects to get what data. So we're using the user data to link the code to our object manager just by referencing that link. You can use the same thing for all sorts of different parameters. Maybe you have a slider instead of uh, wanting to control it using keyframes. Maybe you want a slider so you can read the value of that slider using a similar method. Now, what are these three? Radians 1, Radians 2 and Radians 3. You have to remember that by default, rotations in Cinema 4D are not expressed in degrees as you see in the coordinates manager. They're expressed in radians because mathematically they're more elegant. You have no idea how much that elegance have, has caused me headaches. But now that I'm used to it, I know what I need to do. So we get three variables, one for each of uh, these servos, and uh, we are measuring the angle of vector x, which is the first input of these three rotations, which is essentially the rotation h. And uh, I'm putting it in this variable. So the rotation x, or h, of the object that's linked in the first position is now loaded in the variable called radians 1, the second in the radians 2, and the third in the radians 3. And you can see that other than the three servo names, which are the linked objects, everything else is the same because we're using the same parameter of each object. And then I'm going to convert these radians into my final degree units because I want to drive this using degrees and I want the degrees to be the data that's going to the Arduino. So three more variables, S1, S2, and S3 for Servo1, Servo2, and Servo3. These can be S Noseman1, S, okay, you get the idea. So it's an integer, so it's a whole number, and uh, it uses the C4D utils rad to deg, and you put radians. This is some sort of remapping. It's like a range mapper uh, when you set it from radians to degrees or something like that. But nonetheless, what it does, it takes the value from this attribute here, which is the radians of whatever it's uh, referencing. It's converting it from radians to degrees. And in order to do that, it uses a utility. And uh, util is a library, but it's built in Cinema 4D's Python. So you just call it here and it shall work without a problem. So we're setting three integers. And once we've set these three integers, which are the individual H rotations of each and every one of the objects, we put them in another variable, the final one, hopefully, called bytes to send. You can always name this noseman bytes. Okay, sorry, I, I think I've taken this too far, but you can name it bytes to send noseman, all right? And um, this byte array, what it does, is it converts this, what you see here is an array. It's a one dimensional array that has three components and they're separated by comas. And an array is a construct, uh, it's a variable essentially, that allows you to compact more than one other variables, numbers, names, and so forth. It's like a little database. And uh, 
the byte array, as far as I understand it, because I think um, I've only known this for a few hours, to be honest, this byte array takes this array over here and converts it into bytes, into binary information. Because essentially, what we are transferring over the network using this serial protocol is a uh, ones and zeros, or in the best case, hexadecimal. I'm using difficult words to make it seem that I'm smarter than I am. But nonetheless, this is what it does. The byte array is going to create an array and encode it in some sort of secret magic way in order for these to be converted into bytes. And uh, yeah, they can be transferred over the protocol. And uh, the way the protocol works doesn't allow you to send anything. You, you can't just put some weird string or something like that. So you need to read on the documentation to understand what's going on. I read through it and I had no clue what was going on. Um, I was just testing various things and uh, this just happened to work. And of course, I know people that know things and they tell me. Anyhow, so the final command here, Arduino, which is our port, dot write bytes to send and this is actually writing or sending the bytes to send information which is the byte array with the three components to the serial port once this happens for the particular frame the job of the script is done and every time our animation frame advances it will do the same thing here again and again with the new values from that frame so before we move on to the Arduino side, let me go and show you what I have here. If I open my timeline, you will see that all I've done is created a rotation on the H for these three, and I did it at different rates, so they would move at different speeds, and basically it's just moving them back and forth. The one here is faster, this is a bit slower, and this is very slow. Now there is one thing you need to know that has to do not with the program or anything like that, but with uh, the servos themselves. The ones I'm using have a range of a 180 degrees. Anything above that, they won't move, and anything beyond that, they won't move, because that's how much they can move. So depending on the servos you have, make sure that the animation you use to drive them, or the data you use to drive them, is compatible with their range of motion. And there's one more thing I didn't want to say, but I have to say it because uh, you may get in trouble. The way these protocols work allow you to send values from 0 to 255. And that's because they make the binary version of this, which is usually for integers, it's 8 bits. So the number you can send is from 0 to 255. Now, there are ways and different types of uh, bytes that can be what they call them long and very, very long and extremely long, where you can add these 8 bits and make them 16, 32, 64 bits. So you can send literally any number you want, but you need to amend the code. For the use I have here, and because a servo has a limited range of motion, that 0 to 255, positive always, is convenient because I don't need to do any conversions. But if you're doing something that has, for example, you're driving a motor and you're doing things that need numbers uh, higher than 255, you're out of luck here. I have no idea how to do this. But I'm sure you'll find a solution. What I did is just confined my animation so that uh, none of uh, the values of rotation exceed 180 degrees. As you can see, it's from 0 to 180 for all three of my servers. And you should be looking over here, right? Don't look around. Pay attention, right? So there you go. 180 is the largest value. And you may get errors if you put in negative values or stuff like that. I'm not really sure, but I'm just telling you what you should do. The last little teeny bit I need to tell you about this code is this is now made for three servos for three components. If you want to add more of these, you have to do some adjustments to the code. Now, you can always go and connect these directly. I don't know, I've used this method with the use data because it was more convenient and it makes me look better for the people that are gonna use this. Uh, you need to go to the manage user data 
and you can uh, copy and paste this just right click copy and uh, right click and paste name it for or whatever else you want the um, ID is going to be automatically uh, generated when you click OK and uh, then we have uh, one more thing here you can create another servo so another object go here link it up and then you can go to this object you know I think if you go to the user data over here and say manage user data now you'll see the code is five or you can drag it here so you need to copy and paste everything that is relevant to each and every one of these things so you need to add another line here that says servo 3 let's name this servo 4 good change the ID to 5 or whatever other number that was if you don't remember what it was just select this and sorry select this and take this put it here it says 5 undo to get rid of it again I need to add one more conversion from radians and name it uh, 4 for example and make sure that you change all the symbols and numbers that uh, reference each and every one of these things so you don't get any confusion between the variables and then you add one more entry here you would go and say coma s4 then we'll add one more element here so s4 equals and just copy and paste this and change that one number there you go so you do this four and so forth so um, this I need to do the radians let me just do the whole thing so what I do is uh, go here click return press your shift and up arrow copy this right arrow wrong just put it here and paste and then change the numbers so four four uh, this doesn't need to change and we have one two three four two three four five correct uh, nothing else has any bearing on what we are trying to save nothing else has any bearing on what we are trying to send so that won't be a problem and uh, yeah one two three four and uh, s1 s2 s3 s3 uh, s4 whatever s1 s2 s3 s4 good and uh, this will go to the other side so this uh, sort of um, uh, finalizes what we have to say about the Python code and now let's go back to the Arduino ID and see what we need to do over there so this is the code that controls the three servos and it's based on the servo library so let's start sweeping the code from top to bottom so include the servo library then I'm creating three servo objects with a unique name for each one of them one two and three then I'm setting some uh, global variables which uh, this one is a byte variable the incoming values and it has a length of three because uh, we are getting three values from Cinema 4D for three objects you need to change this depending on how many servos or devices you're planning to control and basically this is per parameter I'm bringing in three rotations from Cinema 4D, so I'm using three values. Then I'm setting the bytes S1, S2 and S3, which are declared as zero for now, and a Boolean value, uh, which is called read OK, and it's false now, uh, so that we can check if we read some parameters. One more thing I'd like you to observe is that the name of the USB connection has changed and that's because I changed some uh, USB cables around and now it's a different address so I had to change it here as well it was 1201 now it's 1301 so always check here to see where your Arduino is connected I'll tell you about what happened in the meantime it's a funny story so the setup part is we need to tell each servo which pin it's attached to now as you'll see later on each servo has three pins one is the pulse and that is what controls the servo the other two are the positive and the negative the ground as we call it so where the orange and that's coincidence that this is orange the orange cable goes which is the pulse so let's go down here I've set the serial speed to the same I have over here in my Python code and I have a serial timeout set to one and I change this to one just so that they match although even with mismatching speeds and uh, timeouts it seemed to have worked earlier but sometimes things work out of coincidence or I wasn't paying attention anyway just uh, make them the same and you're gonna be fine and here's the loop now this is important what we're doing is first we're seeing if there's something to read the serial dot available 
sees if there's something to read at the serial port. And we're reading three components. So every time we get three things, three bytes in this case, in our serial, then this condition is true, and therefore it executes the rest of the code. So it takes an integer called read byte, and uh, it reads the three bytes, and basically this uh, read byte is an integer, I think it's an integer that takes uh, the number 0, 1, and 2, and uh, the incoming values becomes an array with whatever is read within each and every one of those bytes. Now, I'm not sure I explained it well, but this is pretty much what it looks like. I copied and pasted it from uh, Manuel's uh, code. So, there you go. So, let's continue. If read byte equals 3, so we're seeing if we have read 3 uh, components, then set S1 to the first component of the incoming values. And this is an array as far as I can tell. Yes, it is an array. Byte incoming values is an array with a dimension of 3, and it's 0, 0, 0, and then it's going to start receiving one by one the packets. So the uh, angle, the degrees for the first, so I guess it's at frame 0, the value of this 2 thing, and this one is going to get the value of the 3 thing, and this is going to get the value of the 4 thing, which is the rotation values for each and every one of the three objects that are rotating. And uh, after it's loaded these numbers in the S1, S2, and S3, it turns the read OK to true. So yeah, we have a full set of three numbers and uh, all sorts of orchestras and, and musicians and bands play. It, it's, it's a nice event if you're here uh, in the microscopic world of a computer. Anyhow, so this if statement now has completed, and then if read OK, and when you don't have a comparison, that means it's asking if it's true. So if true, then let's do the last little bit, which is write the value of S1 to server 1, the value of S2 to server 2, and value of S3 to server 3. And that completes the package that was intercepted in that cycle. Now, if there were no delays in the networking, it's going to be all the values, but sometimes it can skip some values. I don't even know how it works with these uh, protocols. Uh, I have to say that networking and uh, sending data through networks and uh, serial ports and all that is so complex. Anyhow, this works, and that's what the code does. If you want to change this to work with more than three, then you have to go and add a servo here, add one more element to the array, add one more uh, byte uh, variable, and then add one more pin. Let's go down here, change this to four or five, or how many objects or how many things you're going to transfer, how many parameters. The same here, the same here, add one here, go here, do the same thing, and you can do whatever you want. You can have an LED a turning on and off, uh, but you can use the value, compare it with something, or even just save it somewhere. I don't know what you are going to do. I'm not even going to start speculating. So this completes the code. In any case, uh, just by using these two files, you should be okay providing you just change your port name. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to connect everything up. And then we are going to do a demonstration and show you that with these files, the files I'm going to provide you, it actually works and uh, then you're on your own. So in order to connect uh, the three servos, uh, of course we have an Arduino, we have our three very cheap servos, I think uh, they break very easily. Anyhow, we have a small breadboard, and we have a bunch of cables uh, color-coded so they match the cables of the servos. Now let me tell you a funny story since we're here. I have uh, this thing over here, as you can see. Uh, these are just two cables, a red one and a black one. And basically, I've converted a USB cable so that I can get the 5 volts from one of those uh, USB chargers. And it helps me when I need some more power when I'm powering things like three servos. In this particular case, what I realized is that when I was powering one servo off the power from the USB from the Arduino, there were no real problems. But when I was powering it 
uh, when I was powering three of these servos, uh, I was having some drops in my serial connection. And I think it's because the Arduino had problems uh, feeding power to those three. Or I was doing some terrible mistake when I was experimenting. Anyhow, so if you look at the timestamps uh, at the recorded uh, screens, you'll see that there's a slight discrepancy between two in the afternoon and now uh, it's uh, approaching 10 o'clock at night. Now, of course, uh, in between, uh, I took my son and we went to the playground because we go there every day and it's beautiful, it's freezing, it's got snow, but it was a beautiful day. Anyhow, that's not the story. The story is that when I was preparing this scene, after I recorded uh, the screen videos to show you how I'm going to put this together, nothing worked. Nothing at all worked. At some point, one of the servers was spinning like crazy. Uh, I didn't know if it was the Arduino. I couldn't get any feedback. So I was very frustrated uh, thinking that uh, I'll have to re-record everything because I did a mistake in the code. That's not what happened. What happened was that this little pin here, the black one you can see right here, uh, had actually disconnected from inside. And uh, there was no power feeding the servos. And when I was playing around with the pins, there was some sort of weird short and uh, it sent one of the servos in a weird spin. Anyway, one thing you need to remember when you deal with electronics is if you think software is difficult, then you have no idea how much trouble electronics and hardware can give you. Because literally it took me two hours. I changed the breadboard. I brought another microcontroller. I found another two servos and started switching them around. I went in the code. I did all sorts of things. And it was this little thing because you can't tell. It didn't come right off. And uh, I need to learn to focus with this uh, camera setting. Um, it didn't come off. It was just disconnected inside. And I just found out by accident because I moved it a bit. Then it worked. And I was like, okay, that seems to be the problem. So be prepared when you're dealing with hardware that you will have a lot more literally moving parts and figuratively and uh, you need to be prepared you need patience and uh, i'm wearing gloves so uh, no i'm actually doing it um, as a, a fashion statement but anyhow um, and be very careful when you're working with electricity here we're talking about five volts and a very uh, low current so that won't be an issue but if you start dealing with uh, larger devices then be very 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 careful you need to know what you're doing. And the least that can happen is that you can burn these electronics. It's very easy to burn them. Anyway, let's get down to business. Let's talk about the servo itself. So most of these cheapo servos come with three cables. And uh, in this particular case, and I think it's the majority of cases, we have a red one, which is the power, uh, usually 3.3 or 5 volts. And these can take a bit of power. It's a motor. It doesn't really... Uh, burn that easily. Then you have a darker one. It's black or brown. In this case, it's brown. And that's the ground. And I called it negative before, but it's not negative. It's actually uh, low. It's uh, zero or close to that. And uh, this one, the red one is uh, the high, as we call it, which is the, the five or 3.3 volts. Now, the yellow or orange one is where the pulse is going to go. That's where the signal is going to drive the angle we want this uh, to to go. So let's uh, set this up and I'm going to show you exactly what we are going to do. First of all, I'm going to use the breadboard because with uh, a lot of these electronics, I need to power all three using the external power. And uh, the only uh, sufficient way you can do it, easy way, is using a breadboard. So first of all, before we put the power in, let's go and connect the three orange pins here and we are going to put them on pins nine. And the other thing that happens is I put cables in wrong pins 10 and 11. And all three have that little squiggly thing on top of the number, which indicates that they're uh, pulse width modulation. Good. So now what I'm going to do is take my servos one by one and plug that orange cable into the equivalent orange of the servo. So I'm connecting everything. The Arduino is not connected yet. So there we go. And there we go. I'm a bit messy when I do these things. I've got cables all over the place. There you go. 
So the next thing is I want to connect the grounds. And when you're doing some sort of setup with external power, uh, the ground needs to be common. What does that mean? That means that you go to the Arduino and you find the ground pin. It's got a couple. And you put that ground pin in the ground in the black of your breadboard over here. Okay, so I'm going to put it on this edge over there on that side. So now I'm going to use that side, that rail. Let me bring down this little cable so you can see that rail on the bottom uh, has, uh, the one with the black line, uh, has the, the ground. And I'm going to make that ground common for each and every one of the servos. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to plug in all my brown cables here. One here, one here, and the last one over here. There we go. So we have these. You don't have to put them next to each other. I just do it because I think it looks better. And now I'm going to um, plug it in each of the servos. Let me find the little plug. And already I'm tangled over here. So this is what happens when you deal with electronics and you want to show how three servos work. So go here and plug it in the brown. And uh, conveniently, the brown and the orange are on both sides. So I'm going to have to scramble to get the red one in the middle. But hey, that's the fun of it. There we go. Let's do this. Good. So I've got all the browns. And now I need to connect the powers. So I'm going to put this cable here on the red rail. So I'm going to put three of these next to each other on the red rail. And that's the, the edge where I'm going to put the actual 5 volt power so that I can power all three of these servos efficiently. Good. There we go. So all reds are in, and now I'm going to put them in the servos. I know there are going to be some electronics experts there that are pulling their hair. And my reply is, I do not have hair to pull. So that's the only thing I can do here, just do hairy stuff with cables. So there we go. Let me do this. And I've got all my cabling done. And that's my first take. Now, I'm going to tell you if uh, it's the fifth take. So you won't hear this, you'll hear all the rest. So I have my servos somewhere here. I'm going to put them somewhere so you can see them. Excellent. And I'm going to have the Arduino somewhere there. That looks like a really neat uh, way of uh, doing electronics. And uh, yeah. So uh, now what we are going to do is bring in our USB cable. This is connected to my Mac. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. There we go. It's plugged in. And you can see lights going on. So the software that's running currently on the Arduino is the latest test I did with uh, the software I'm going to show you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the Arduino code to the Arduino. My mouse is over there, so I'm going to move my hand over. So the lights did their little blinky dance, transmit, receive, and all that. So now my code is running on the Arduino. But there's no data being fed there. You will see that when we start Cinema 4D running the Python code, the receive is going to start flashing because it's receiving data. But before I do that, now I'm going to connect the power to the servos. So don't do the mistake I did earlier. Make sure you plug the ground to the ground, and the power to the power. Oops, there we go. So they did their little dance. I'm going to make sure that you can see them all in some sort of way, whatever. If you can't put them in one place, there's a trick. I realize you go like this, and if you do that enough times, the chances are you won't be able to do anything, but it's fun doing it anyway. So they have a mind of their own, these things. Just wait until they start working. And now I'm going to run the code on Cinema 40. And here are the three servos moving. And uh, as you can see from the overlay, they're moving at the same speeds I have animated the objects. 
So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. This is a new type of tutorial. It's a bit of a long form, but as you saw, the project is not as simple as a technique or something like that in Cinema 4D. If you wish to see more of these kinds of uh, breakdowns and sort of um, venturing into other types of technologies and maybe VR, maybe other stuff, uh, just throw some ideas in the comments section and I'll see what I can do. Now, one bit of caution when it comes to this particular tutorial. The code is not complete. The connection of computers uh, through serial protocols and all that is a very complex matter. And uh, my particular code has one little problem. And well, I'm sure it has many problems, but something I realized at the end. When everything seems to work and you pause Cinema 4D, you rewind and you press play again, the sequence of the servos sometimes changes. So. In the beginning, every time you do it the first time, the first servo is going to play the first animation, the second, the second, and the third, the third. But if you stop Cinema 4D and you rewind and you press play again, you may see that the first servo is playing the second, um, the, the second animated object's uh, animation and you see some sort of switch. And this may be due to the fact that when we pause Cinema 4D, it's not guaranteed that all the three numbers are going to be sent. So if two numbers have been sent, what happens is that the Arduino is not going to transmit that information to the servos because we told it to wait for three to come. So the next time we start and the serial begins, it's going to take the first element, add it to the other two that are remaining, and we may see this kind of confusion. Again, I haven't pinpointed the problem, but uh, alongside that, if you find any other problems, and please be uh, meticulous uh, because... Uh, uh, you, you need to put some effort into doing your electronics and doing complex things like these. So make sure that you do your own troubleshooting. And uh, if anyone does anything interesting, I would love to see it. And if you need any other uh, advice or information or tutorials on similar subjects, uh, please uh, throw them in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe and uh, send me stuff. And because you don't have my address, just send stuff to random people put random addresses it's always good to pay it forward for whatever reason and don't forget nose man knows <laughs>